we go. How, how different does it feel this year, Jim, after having been here a year now, is the comfort level, things like that? Not just being here, but the second year of your program on. Uh, you know, I, every day you wake up, you, there's a new something going on. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure you ever get comfortable. And usually when you get comfortable, that means you get your tail beat. So um, it, it's kind of status quo from that standpoint. Jeff, apparently one of the things that's going to come up in, among the coaches is trying to come up with something new or different to find a way to get more information to these underclassmen who declare and then they don't get drafted. Yeah. Is there a more creative way to do it? Is there a way to get better information? Should there be a junior combine? Is there a better way to do it than what's being done now? You know, I just hate to see what happens to some of them, you know, maybe whether it's the reports or they're listening to bad advice or whatever that is that sit there thinking they're going to get drafted and, you know, have an opportunity to come back and, and maybe help that draft stock, draft stock, but more than that, actually continue to work towards that degree. And, uh, you know, I think it's, it's uh, one of those deals that, uh, you know, the rules are the way they are. You know, is there a better way to do it? Obviously, that's for somebody else to figure out. Um, you know, I just, I, I, I just feel for those guys. And, you know, whether it's some kind of combine, I, I, I don't know what it is. It's something, and yet, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's really, it's their choice and who they choose to get their information from. And, you know, there, there's, there's so many cases where when a guy chose maybe to come back and really helped himself, you know, uh, moving up. Um, well, who knows? You know, it's, it's one of those things I think we all need to look at. From your perspective as a coach, would, it all, would, a, would a path back for players almost have to be before National Signing Day so wow. you knew what your roster would be? <laughs> it sure helped. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that, that's the one thing that, you know, the declaration piece at least allows you to know a little bit of where you're at. Um, now I think maybe the question for everybody there is, you know, how do the baseball guys handle it? You know, I talked to Sully. You know, they got guys committed and then somebody's drafted or, you know, whatever. I don't know how they keep it organized, to be honest. So, uh, but, you know, it's definitely, I think, something that, that should be looked into, into more so, not, not for us. I'm, I'm talking about for the betterment of these players in helping them make the decision, whatever that decision may be. Jim, the West has kind of dominated the SEC almost over the last decade. The success, success you had with Kirby on Georgia, Will at Muscat, that tough line, what Tennessee has. You, you feel the East is on the cusp of a reemergence? No, I don't know. You know, time will tell. Um, obviously, those programs have done a heck of a job on the other side. Uh, and yet, you know, I don't think there's anybody on our side that's going to sit there and say that, you know, we don't belong. And, uh, but until it until it happens, you know who knows. Um, I know obviously those guys you mentioned are great ball coaches, and will get those programs going. And and uh, you know I just know we play them every year. So, coach, I, I'm assuming no update on Antonio Callaway. Is that correct? Yeah, same is, same is, deal. Is he t in summer A? Uh, no. Or, no, not right now. When's, when have you seen him in a while? You know, that's I know you being don't want to be too specific, so. but are you, ta have you, are you talking down? That's being handled, so. Gotcha. Coach, how tough is it to win in this league with a first-year starter quarterback? It, it's uh, it's hard. It, it, it is. Uh, you know, I think it has more to do with the supporting cast around that person. Um, you know, we're pretty fortunate, uh, I think, when we were at Alabama to have Greg, but he was a McElroy, but he had been in the program for a while. And then same thing with AJ when he became a starter, you know, that, that first year. Um, and yet I, I don't know that it has as much to do with that particular position as it does. What have you done for the other 10 guys on offense and, and the other guys on defense to, to help that guy be successful? What's that dynamic like in the in the room? I mean, you did it last year for the first time, but you, you know, Will's now back in the room after being with the Gators recently. Um, you coached under guys, and 
Did, what's the kind of the coaching dynamic in there? No, well, I think you know a lot of guys. Obviously, it's 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 fascinating because you get an opportunity to exchange ideas on you know whatever the topics are and just to listen how other people think and really opened your eyes to you know some different ways of looking at whatever the situations are and, and uh, you know it's good I, I'm going to miss Coach Spurrier I mean I'm <laughs> be honest there I mean he, he obviously had a way of keeping it light every now and then so can you go back to the uh, first year quarterback thing is there particular positions on offense that that can help more with a first year starting quarterback or is well it I think that? ultimately whether your offense or defense it begins up front uh, if you've got a veteran offensive line, especially somebody to help them, depending on what kind of system you're in, I mean, it, it's all varies. But, um, you know, some guys up front that, that have been through it and, you know, can help with some of the declarations and the protections and, you know, some things that way to kind of ease that guy into it, obviously it really helps. So, uh, but, again, that that's in the – systems worry and uh, some of these other you know I mean maybe that's not as important I don't know. Do yeah, you monitor what players tweet or put on Facebook and, and do you <clears throat> talk to them about what they Yeah we have post? you know we've got constant the social media piece is look at guys that's the way they communicate today it's it's the way kids today talk I mean you they, they communicate at a dinner table like that <laughs> you know I mean and so like one of the things we do is our Sunday team meals, everybody's got to put their cell phones in the middle of the field, or middle of the table, and actually look at each other in the eye and communicate. It's a fascinating concept, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, do, you, do you talk to players about what No, we have constant education. We do um, people to bring in. The interesting thing here to me is it, the use of it can really help enhance your brand. The use of it can be very positive, and yet people are just sitting there reading these every day for somebody to screw up and make a big deal about it. And so the education piece to me is, is look, that's how you communicate, that's what you do, you know, have at it. But I think it's our responsibility to at least help them in the education piece on what they can do to use it to enhance their own personal brand. Um, you know, as they move along, and, and yet, uh, you know, it, look, we live in a free country, you know. <laughs> you know, all we can do, our, our biggest thing is, is being a teacher, being an educator, helping them hopefully make choices and decisions that can help them in turn be successful in life. And yet, you know, day in and day out, there's, there's examples of where guys shot themselves in the foot by doing it, and, uh, but, you know what, it isn't about ridiculing that action, it's about, okay, learning from that action and what can you do to maybe help you in the future. That That's really, to me, what it's all about. Just, Just out of curiosity, what's your, what's your overall impression of IMG Academy and how they've kind of changed the high school football landscape and the recruiting? Well, yeah, I think, you know, they've done a great job. They're, you know, getting great people in there and, you know, the concept is, you know, fine. I think. We saw a little bit maybe on the West Coast at Bishop Gorman a little bit, uh, kind of what they were doing, to probably not the extent of the training piece, but uh, you know, they do a great job. Hopefully one of these days they like us too, I don't know. <laughs> Does Jalen Taylor, Taylor have loss of value and catastrophic injury insurance? Um, yeah. I mean, I why would, wouldn't you? I, I would assume. Yeah, I it's, would hope so. It's a very unregulated industry and there's been yeah. a lot of concerns raised by your all, peers all about, our guys, about all that. our guys you know that, that have that opportunity it's something that you know we educate them through and they go through the process and and that's something that's very important are, are there concerns though from the <clears throat> regulatory side just as far as players get these insurance policies if something were to happen collecting has been incredibly difficult for players where the circumstance presents itself to collect you know you're gonna have to do the research on that I, I don't know about the collection. I hopefully keep collectors off my porch. You know, <laughs> that's that's all I hope. <laughs> Jim, there have there have been some first year head coaches in this league. First time they ever were a head coach coming in this league. How much did it benefit you to be a head coach before you came into the SEC? Well, it, I think each each situation is 
you know, separate situation. Some guys are more prepared than others. Um, whatever that is, uh, I can only speak personally. I really felt the experience that Colorado State gave me that opportunity to, to you know, go in and, and uh, captain a ship was very beneficial. And uh, however, no, that isn't the model. I mean, you, you got to get a start somewhere. You know, you've come a long way with facilities in just a year. What's yeah. next for you guys and, and maybe on your wish list? Well, you know, the, it, here's a good thing is it, there's been a master plan that's being looked into, and I haven't seen the results yet, Mark, at all, other than I know it's something that uh, our administration is moving forward with, and it's really exciting. It's exciting for the program. It's exciting for our players. And really, ultimately, it's exciting for the university um, when you look at, you know, the opportunity to, to really create something that's going to be sustainable. Um, and, I mean, we've done an outstanding job. I mean, our, I mean that the, the indoor and, and what we've done in the academic center, which will go into this summer, or, yeah, this summer. Um, if you get an opportunity to go see that, I mean, it's uh, it's got the players' best interests in mind. How, how close are you to being caught up? Would you say? Well, I don't know that you ever catch up, you know. Um, and yet, uh, at the same time, it isn't about catching up as much as it is, I think, about creating an environment that'll help your guys be successful. Jim, and the, uh, that's sorry. what it's about. Sorry, the Ivy League in the off season voted to do away with uh, live tackling full contact during their fall practices. Mm -hmm. Is that something that can work at this level? Well, I don't. I guess as long as everybody else is doing it, you know, that, um, yeah, I know this, we've come a long ways in teaching the proper mechanics of keeping your head out, you know, and, and the things that we go through every single day in our ADDs on proper tackling technique, proper contact technique, and, uh, you know, that's something I think that's been really good for football. Um, you don't ever know until there's enough um, statistical data to see how much it helps because in some case you know not learning how to properly do it then going into a live game situation I you know I don't know that that's the answer either and yet uh, obviously the Ivy League's a lot smarter than I am so <laughs> Would you be interested in an early signing period for recruiting, and what would be the benefits or negatives if there are to do that? Well, I think, you know, it's something that we've tossed around for years now, and what's the right model? I kind of, the way I kind of look at it is as long as everybody's recruiting under the same model, you know, you adapt to it. And if there is an early one, I think uh, some of that early has been taken care of because of the early enrollment of players. You know that that graduate early, so they don't have to go through that <laughs> that mess all the way till February, and uh, so I think that 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 in itself has maybe answered some of the early signing right there. For hey, as Michael, much what talent. Your thoughts on uh, on the instant replay possibly being making decisions from the Birmingham office during a game? Well, I think it's great. I think as much input as there can be to get whatever the call is. And look, uh, my dad was an official, he was a coach, he was an official. I, I get how hard that is. And then, you know, from the replay situation, you know, there's some bang, bang things that happen. I think having a, a, a general clearinghouse is probably a good way to do it. And, uh, you know, as long as it doesn't probably delay, and, and you know, we'll see. But, I mean, today you get... Is there a concern that you're kind of, you're kind of taking the game away from the officials on the field? No, and I don't think that that's even a concern for them. They want to get it right. And and I do know this about <coughs> officials. It, they work their tails off. And it's a hard deal. I mean, you're making bang, bang calls, you know, right there. And, and um, you know, I know our our officials do an outstanding job. They're really, they communicate well on the sideline. They kind of let you know what's going on. Um, you know, I, I like the way our guys work. And Whatever you think can help the game is is really what I'm into. Coach, sure. I know it's a couple of months still, but it's it's about it's let's see, I got about uh, 
I got to kind of count it down. But I got about about a month and a half, really, until my daughter gets married. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Well, after that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but that's awesome. After that, though, do you expect Alex? Anzalone and Martez to be cleared. For yeah, contact. and in fact, they've been cleared to do everything right now. And obviously, there's no contact. But yeah. I'll, it'll it'll be no different than what we did even with Antonio. You know, a year ago, you you've got to get and but you still have to test it before. You know, you want to throw them out there on a Saturday. But everything's been going great. And Powell and Brandon too. In fact, he's got a new set of shoes that uh, I took every other shoe out of his locker <laughs> but uh, he's required to wear to help on that but he's had he's been cleared so um, for as much talent as there is in recruiting in the state of Florida the big concern of satellite camps is not so much outside the region but with the SEC cannibalization, cannibalization being a major topic Cannibalization well, in recruiting? <laughs> oh, yeah. Within the conference, that sounds really bad. I don't know about that. Is that? Is that? I don't know. Yeah, I got you. Uh, so, how how concerning is it to have? I can't believe it's very thirteen. Holy mackerel! This guy's beautiful. Where'd you get him, Edgar? <laughs> to have thirteen of your peers visiting your state, all over your state. You know, here's the deal, though. The state of Florida had been recruited by everybody in the country well before any of this. And as long as the rules allow, I mean, they should come. It's, it's as good a football as there is in the country. I would imagine there's a bunch of it going on in Texas as well. I would imagine there's a bunch of it going on in California. You know, wherever those, you know, hotbeds are, and, uh, you know, would I rather have them not come? Well, that'd be a good deal. But as long as the rules say they can, more power to them. Coach, how do you breathe patience and the quarterback? It seems like these guys are bouncing around. They, they don't want a red shirt. They don't want to sit behind a the guy. They're transferring yeah, a lot. Pretty amazing. How, how do you get them to be willing to sit behind a guy and develop? Well, I don't know. Each guy's different. And, uh, you know, they find their niche and, and realize it's a pretty good opportunity to maybe sit there and get their feet wet and, and uh, learn how to do it and, and then go on from there. But, you know, I think that question probably has more to do with the societal thing today that, you know, if I'm not going to get in, I'm going to take my ball and go home. You know, I mean, that look at the people transferring, you know, every single day from running away from competition or whatever it might be so but you know what it, it, it happens you just deal with it and try to do what's best for the player I mean that that's one of the things that I think gets lost a little bit is all of us are in this for what's in it for the best of the individual player sometimes a change of scenery is best other times maybe it's best that you know you stay you learn then all of a sudden you're a step ahead, you know, I, I do believe sometimes you can probably throw somebody in a little too early and you know what, they can be psychologically scarred for a little bit, you know, from the, from that trauma and uh, so it's just every guy's different and uh, I don't know. Can you tell when you're recruiting them that, that, that they might be that type of a kid? Yeah, I mean you can look at track records. <laughs> you know, to kind of see what they've run away from in their life, and what they follow through, and uh, but there is no predictor. So uh, you make educated guesses, and uh, hopefully the evaluation is right.